and having that beautiful conflict between them, like, those are the best scenes. I was craving the drama. So, Wild Sign. Definitely read it the day that it came out, and I have some thoughts. So let's get this party started. One of the characters that has been slowly evolving through these books is Leia. But the brilliant thing about Leia is that she hasn't really been evolving. Our view of her has. Because, like, starting at the beginning, Leia was the evil stepmother. She was totally hated by pretty much all of the characters, not because she's evil, but because she's just such an intense jerk. Or at least that's what we thought in the beginning. But then now, by book six, she's still a little bit of that, but we've gotten to know her so much better that now she's one of my favorite characters. This character that I loved to hate before, now I just love. And that transformation happened because of two main things, which is one, we got to see that she's not just, I'm the queen bee, everyone has to follow me, but she's actually willing to sacrifice and put her own life on the line in order to help others. And the more we got to see those intentions throughout the series, the more I started to warm to her until finally this book, book six, knocked it out of the park because we finally got to figure out things like Leia's tragic backstory her inner feelings, her going out of her way to help new people adjust to the werewolf pack emotionally, and her pining after her love, Bran. So Bran and Leia's relationship is something that I have been uncomfortable with from the beginning, because it was a kind of strained relationship, because their marriage, their werewolf mating, was really a thing of convenience. But then now, they've been married for like 200 years, and Leia is totally in love with Bran, but Bran is still like, eh, you're okay. And Bran isn't ever abusive in the way that's like physically violent or bullying to Leia, but he is abusive in the neglect of her emotional state. But then finally in this book, Bran has to go through a wake up call and realize that he can't keep treating Leia like this. And their relationship finally becomes something kind of wholesome and good in the end. And I loved it, because by that point, I was totally rooting for Leia. At the beginning of the series, I think a happy ending would have been they break up. But now that I've come to love Leia, this was the happy ending. And I'm really excited for how their relationship proceeds on from here, because they already had a pretty stable relationship, if emotionally neglectful. And now that it's progressing towards an actual healthy relationship, they might just become a really awesome power couple. But the place where the plot in this book excelled was where we had the reveal that Xander, the friendly guy who ran the snow cone shack, was the evil villain all along. And I didn't see it coming. And a big part of why I didn't see it coming is that Xander, the character, played a different part in the narrative. He wasn't just like, random guy, why are we spending so much time for him? He must be important later. But he was important in the moment, because it allowed Anna to ruminate about how her taste in men have changed. Because she thought, you know, before, I would have been the type of girl who was really into Xander. He's really great. But because Anna has changed, through her past trauma, through her growing through that, becoming stronger, she's become the type of person who can be in love with someone who is actually dangerous like Charles. He's ready to throw down at a moment's notice, but now, since Anna has grown through all of these terrible things, she's also ready to throw down at a moment's notice, and that isn't a thing that scares her away anymore. And that really ties into the scene where Anna lost her memory for a little bit. And the scene that I wanted out of this book, okay, hear me out here, because Anna lost her memory for a day, and that was really interesting and had a lot of good feels and beats and angst in there. But what I really wanted to top off the cake was the same thing happening to Charles. Because through Anna's memory loss, we got to see the contrast of who she was at the beginning of the series and where she's at now, of how much she's grown. But I would have loved to see the same contrast happen to Charles, of where he was at the beginning of the series versus now. Because he has grown in different ways. He's become more emotionally open and available and willing to be vulnerable in front of people, not just Anna. 
And we could have gotten even better scenes between him and his inner wolf spirit, Brother Wolf, because Brother Wolf probably wouldn't have been affected by the memory loss, and he could have been, like, slapping Charles into line. Like, no, you don't disrespect Anna. You don't get to hide your feelings from her. She is your mate, and you need to trust her. And having that beautiful conflict between them, like, those are the best scenes. I was craving the drama. But there was one scene of drama in here that... I was kind of confused and kind of am still a little confused of why this scene was in here. Because in this book, there's a side plot about people being semi-magically impregnated by this evil demon god, like, long story. Anyway, but this woman named Dr. Connors is magically impregnated, and then when she finds out she's pregnant, her and her wife start fighting. But when I was reading the scene, I was like, why is this in here? And then I had the wonderful idea that this scene was in here because it was a prelude and going to be a contrast between when Charles and Anna would have a similar conversation because she would also be magically impregnated. And I was disappointed that that conversation never happened. But what did happen? Let's talk about that instead. And now they have a baby! And once I started thinking about how this book was building up to this moment, I was so impressed. Because this book really explores Charles's feeling about fatherhood and parenthood without being too blatant about it until it's really building up to this moment where he finally does suddenly become a father. And it was so satisfying. And now I'm so excited for these future books exploring them being parents. But let's unpack a little bit because Charles has a few different parental figures in his life. We have his stepmother, Leia, who, as mentioned in the beginning, was the evil stepmother, and his various uncles and grandfather who helped raise him because his actual father, Bran, was very emotionally neglectful to the point where it's outright said in this book that at some points Bran wanted to kill his own son because he was so mad and blamed his son for the death of his wife. Messed up, right? And it's like, Charles, one of his goals in life is not to be like his father. Like, in many ways, he wants to be like his father, but in other ways, that is exactly what he doesn't want to be, especially in the parenthood, in the romance corner of his life. There's this beautiful scene where Charles is thinking like, huh, my wolf spirit, Brother Wolf, he's getting really articulate. And Brother Wolf explains that this is because he didn't want to repeat Bran's mistake of not being able to communicate properly with Charles's mother, which eventually kind of led to her death. So even down to his multiple personality wolf spirit, so many motivations of what Charles does is to not be like Bran his father. So of course he's got some baggage about being a father. And I think it even comes down to a fear of emotional absolutes. Because Charles knows that if he has a kid, he is going to do anything to protect that kid. Like there is no line he wouldn't be willing to cross for his child. But Charles knows exactly how dangerous emotional absolutes can be, because that is exactly the behavior that made Bran so dangerous, even to Charles himself, was the emotional absolute of hanging on to his dead wife. And this book really set up the future explorations of Charles being a dad. So even though this book wasn't the tightest, like, plot narrative-wise, there are definitely some scenes in here that could have and probably should have been cut out. It was really good emotionally in building up to this climactic epilogue that is ready to springboard us into the next books in this series, of which I am pretty ready to read. So, what did you think of this book? Mm -hmm.